Hey everyone, welcome back to Chemistry CC for you. So I haven't been posting for a really long time. Uh, it was because my PhD work was catching up. I had to go back to the campus and you know how the current situation is. So it was very difficult to uh, maintain regularity in posting the videos at that time. Um, but here after I know the examination season has been started again. So we'll try to uh, uh, post and update contents regularly hereafter. So today we are going to deal with a set of questions that is very important for all the examinations, specifically for CSA and NET and the MSc entrances like CUSET, CUSAT, BHU, Pune University and so on. So this is very important part because you know at least two questions from solid state chemistry would come for every MSc chemistry entrance examinations. And also, um, if CSR net for both part B as well as C, you could see questions from the solid state chemistry. So we have taken questions of um, varying difficulty, which can be, uh, which would be helpful for you to revise all the concepts from uh, the basic levels as well as the advanced levels. And also initially we had done a video covering almost all the important formula of this part. Uh, the link of which I would give in the description box and also you can find it in the screen above uh, in the towards the end of the video as well as the beginning of the video. So let's start without wasting much time now. So the first question here is which of the following oxides behaves as conductor or insulator depending upon temperature. So we have four options here. Uh, TiO, SiO2, TiO3 and MgO. So these kinds of questions are pretty confusing because this looks very similar. In your mind, the properties also might be very similar. But the answer here is option C, TiO3. Uh, you can keep this in mind. Write this down in a paper because uh, this would be helpful for you in your final revision. Then I, have, I want to give the information of one of the latest discovery. In CSIR net, they always update the questions. They ask very um, uh, very latest discoveries to know whether you are ready to keep up with the trends that is happening in the subject. So samarium hexaboride, it's called as a condo insulator. So what happens is this is having a very narrow band gap. So you, we know that according to the band gap, we can categorize a particular uh, compound as a good conductor or an insulator. So because of this band gap, it is actually a very good conductor at room temperature. But at very low temperature, that is even below 50 Kelvin, this can have some very peculiar interactions between its electron and behaves as an insulator. That's why it's known as a condo insulator. So please keep this example in mind, samarium hexaboride. So it's a condo insulator. Now the second question, total number of voids in 0.5 mole of a compound forming hexagonal closed pack or HCP structure is. So let's directly go to the solution. So we know the number of voids per molecule. That is in one molecule of hexagonal closed pack structure, there are three voids. And uh, the number of voids uh, in 0.5 mole, therefore, would be 3 into 0.5 into the total number of molecules. So we know that in one mole is equal to how much? One mole is equal to uh, N A number of molecules, which is the Avogadro number, Avogadro principle. So one mole contains N A molecules. So here uh, we have 0.5 moles. The so total number of molecules would be uh, 3 into, uh, sorry, N A into 0.5. Uh, molecules will be there. In one molecule, if it is uh, 3, so for 0.5 into Na into 3 would be the total number of voids in the 0.5 mole of molecule. So on substituting that, we will have 3 into 0.5 into 6.0022 into 10 to the power 23 and our answer would be um, 9.033. So what is the answer? Option D is the correct answer. We have uh, 9.033 into 10 to the power 23 uh, voids in 0.5 molecules HCP. Always keep in mind HCP closed pack structure. So uh, we have discussed the voids and the number of voids present in the initial video I have mentioned. Please go watch that. It will be really helpful for you to continue your studies.
let's go to the next question so in a compound uh, in a compound atoms of the element so there is an element so in this question there are two com two atoms i mean two elements makes up this particular compound x and y and y form cubic close pack lattice and x for occupy two by third of the tetrahedral voids so we need to find the to the formula of the compound so x and y should be there we need to know how much x or how much y is present in the formula of that compound Let's let's see the solution. So I'll initially give you the answer. X Y four Y X four Y three is the answer. Let's see how we get this particular answer. So number of atoms of Y per unit cell. So in CCP or can be close pack structure, the total number of atoms is four. So X would be X occupies the cubic close pack form. So it means it is a direct indication that there will be four of uh, sorry. Uh, number of atoms of y per unit cell would be ccp so y occupies the cubic close pack structure so the total number would be 4 now what is the next point that is given 2 by third of the tetrahedral voids is occupied by element x so see uh, if we have uh, n number of atoms in a particular uh, unit cell there will be 2 n number of tetrahedral voids i'll write it as pd tetrahedral voids and uh, n number of octahedral voids. So n is the total number of atoms. So 2n octa 2n tetrahedral voids and n octahedral voids will be present. So here what would happen? The number of tetrahedral voids will be 2n or 2 into 8, 2 into 4, which is equal to 8. So the total number of tetrahedral voids in the whole unit cell is uh, unit cell is 8. But 2 by 3rd of this is uh, occupied by the, uh, com the element x. So 2 by 3 into 8, which is 16 by 3. So now you know the cubic close pack structure, which y occupy has total number of 4. So we have 4 y's and a 16 by 3 of x. So if we substitute, the formula somehow becomes x 16 by 3 y 4. Now if we are trying to, uh, uh, now we can, uh, remove the uh, fraction here and if we try to remove the fraction what happens it will become x4 by 3 that is the answer here hope it is uh, clear to each one of you let's go forward now which of the following is not an example for spinal structure this is very important one of this question is repeated every single time in your msc entrance examination of spinal and inverse spinal structure so here the answer is option C, C A T I O three is the is not a spinal structure. All the other three are examples of spinal structure. Write those down because that question can be asked in your examination. What are the spinal structures in this, or what is the inverse spinal? See, you can study any one. Like either the combinations of spinal structure exam examples can be studied, or you can study the examples of inverse spinal structure. This is a technique that you could follow in most of the questions that you are writing in your examination. That uh, sometimes only a specific amount, number of things can be asked in a topic. Like here in spinal structure, always repeatedly the number of questions are the same. So here what we can do is we can uh, directly uh, we can directly memorize the na names of spinal structure so that you can always easily select the inverse spinal structure. Now, let me give some more example of what a spinal structure is. So, a spinal structure has a formula of M, M, M prime to X4. So, that is there are M and M dash uh, elements with M dash having two, two, two M dash would be present and X4 would be there. This X is usually an anion. Typically, it, it can be either oxygen, fluorine or it can be a combination of both at times. The structure uh, is first named after the mineral of MgAl2O4 and the general formula uh, it is Ab2O4. M primes are tetrahedrally and octahedrally coordinated uh, cations and their uh, oxidation states are also to be considered. So this is the information about spinal structure. Now the crystal structure with a metal deficiency defect is it is option C, FeO. So now let's take a look at what the metal deficiency defect and some information. So transition metals can show a varying oxidation states. We know that it can start from 0 to 7, can go up to 7. So ferrous oxide, ferrous sulfide, nickel oxide, etc. are very important examples. That is oxides can show varying uh, varying 
oxidation states. So certain cations will go missing from the lattice sites and other positive charges are balanced by extra charges on the neighborhood. This results in some sort of decimal kind of uh, decimal kind of um, numbers like Fe uh, 0 0.930 to Fe 0 0.950. We have already learned about this. In such cases, what happens? We call it a metal deficiency defect. So defects are important. Uh, we, we, I'll try to cover one more video of this topic so we can uh, conclude this very, very nicely, this, this particular portion. Now let's move on to the next question. The number of tetrahedral volts per unit cell in NaCl crystal is? So first of all, the answer is both B and C. So why? Uh, in NaCl crystals, the total number of atoms present is four. In NaCl per unit cell, there is four atoms. So I have already said that if there are n number of atoms, the total number of tetrahedral volts will be equal to 2n and the total number of octahedral volts will be n. Octahedral is n and tetrahedral is 2n. So here, since the total number of atoms is 4, the total number of uh, tetrahedral volts should be 2 into 4, which is equal to 8. So B is a correct answer. And also, what is the number of octahedral volts? It directly became 4 and therefore uh, 8 is twice the number of 4. And therefore, we could also write twice the number of octahedral volts. So both B and C are the correct answer for this particular question. Next question is very important type of question. The edge length of a phase centered cubic or FCC cell of an ionic crystal. Please be very clear. It's an ionic crystal. And here the radius of cation is given. The total edge length is given. We need to find the radius of the anion. So first of all, what you have to remember is uh, the edge length or we can write it as A. A by 2 is equal to R plus plus R minus. That is how we begin this. That is the total num the sum of the radius of cation and anion is half the edge length. So double the sum of uh, radius of cation and anion will give you the edge length. Here the edge length is given as 508 picometer. So 2 into R plus plus R minus would be equal to 508. Or we could also write R plus plus R minus is equal to A by 2 or 508. 8 by 2 which is 254 then we already have the radius of the cation as 110 so the radius of the uh, anion or r minus is equal to 254 minus 110 which is equal to 144 picometer our answer is option a 144 picometer you can keep this in mind i have discussed many of this part in the previous video that i mentioned which you can find in the description box below uh, we'll also do we have also solved some previous questions also i'll give the link of that one also in the description box below uh, go through that it, it's a good revision for each one of you so the answer is option a now this is another important set which is the Bragg's law where we are dealing with the Bragg's law so what they are asking the angle at which first order reflection will occur in an extra x-ray spectrometer where x-rays of wavelength 1.54 are diffracted by the atoms of a crystal with interplanar distances 4.04. So almost everything is directly given here. Only thing we need to find is the angle. So let's let's talk about the Bragg's equation at first. So the Bragg's equation is 2d sine theta is equal to lambda. Lambda is the wavelength of the light diffracted uh, and theta is that angle at which that occurs and d is the interplanar distance. So here we need to find theta. Lambda and d are already given. Actually, it is 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda. So the order of reflection is given as n. So here, since already in this question, the order is given as first order, n will be equal to 1. And therefore, we need not write n again. That's why we have directly written 2d sin theta is equal to lambda. Therefore, theta is equal to sine inverse of lambda by 2d. Now we are substituting. We know lambda is given as 1.54 and uh, d is given as 4.04. So 2d becomes 8.08. .08. Sine inverse of uh, 0.191, which is 10 degree 59 um, minute, which is option A. So that's the answer. It's a very, very direct and simple question. Keep this equation in mind. Don't forget this N. Sometimes to confuse you, they'll give the question for second order reflection. So in that case, what do you have to do? You have to give the value of N as 2. If it is first order reflection, you can directly write it as 2D sine theta is equal to lambda. 
let's go to the ninth question which of the following is a perovskite structure so you have four options i'll directly give the answer here the answer is option c ca tio3 so what are these perovskites so these are ternary oxides uh, and they have the for general formula abo3 just keep this in mind and just look at the options given here directly you know option c is the answer so you don't have to think much anyway let's go to more more generally this ab x3 and x can be anions like o n etc and uh, a, a anions are typically large very large like um, they can be rb plus barium uh, strontium etc lanthanide plus three ions all this and this b would be generally smaller compared to a and uh, the mineral with which this structure is uh, the perovskite structure so here only one option is feasible to this category which is catio3 and there it for that itself is our answer now the next question the cubic unit cell of aluminium which we know the molar mass is 27 has an edge length of 405 picometer its density is given as 2.7 gram per centimeter cube we need to know what is what kind of cubic unit cell it is making up so here uh, the i have already discussed in the previous video this particular formula where the density rho can be written as the in terms of molar mass the number of atoms in the unit cell the total number of the sorry avogadro number and the edge length here everything except n is given if you know the number of atoms in this unit cell we can directly give the answer for uh, what kind of unit cell is made so here on substituting all the value we can write n is equal to rho n a a cube by m so rho is given as what is our rho 2.7 na we already know it is 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 a is given as 405 and m is given as 27 please be careful about the unit here everything is in the same unit so i don't have to check much and also these units will be cancelled out here because of uh, n is a n does not have a unit because the number of atom so on substitution we get four and four the total number of units uh, uh, atoms is four for the fcc unit cell so our answer would be option a phase centered cubic unit cell hope you understood initially we will be do using the formula of the density substitute the value of edge length avogadro number uh, and the molar mass and we find the total number of atoms in the unit cell then we will be directly substituting uh, like we will cross check which one of the unit cell has this much number of atoms in the single unit cell from that we can arrive at our answer next question the coordination number of sodium in na2o is so the coordination number is 4 na2 is called as an anti fluoride structure so in this O2 minus. So directly we know here Na plus and O2 minus are present. O2 minus are in CCP arrangement and Na plus occupies the octahedral world. In this case, each of the O2 minus is in contact with 8 Na plus ions and each Na plus ion is in contact with 4 O2 minus ions. So therefore, the coordination number is, uh, sorry, the therefore the coordination number is 4. So that's all. We have discussed these many questions here. Uh, I'll continue uploading the videos. Uh, next video, I'll try to upload something from gaseous state. And also, I'm starting a new series, which is uh, Concepts in a Pocket Diary, where we'll be discussing very important concepts in very short time. And you such a way that you can die, write down all the points like a cheat sheet in a pocket diary. So we are uh, starting. I'm working on that content. It will be really helpful for your every single examination so many contents are coming very soon please keep watching our channel for more videos uh, thank you for all the support uh, that you have given even when we were not uh, active for the past months uh, so thank you so much for watching the channel uh, please keep supporting subscribe if you have not subscribed yet and uh, share the video with all your friends thank you so much uh, stay safe and uh, study well thank you